Narada said, O Brahma, the fortunate, the dispenser of the fruits of our actions, you are a blessed devotee of Shiva as your mind is fixed in him. You have narrated to me the good story of Shiva, the great soul. When Kama returned to his hermitage with Rati and his followers, what happened and what steps did you take? Please narrate that now. Brahma said, O Narada, listen lovingly to the story of the moon-crested lord, the mere listening to which makes a man free from depravity and decay. When Kama returned to his abode with Rati and his followers, what happened next you can hear from me in full detail. O sage Narada, my arrogance was quashed when my desire remained unrealized, and surprise filled my dissatisfied and distressed heart. How will Shiva, who is free from depravity, who has conquered himself, and who is devoted to yogic practices, take a wife unto himself? Thinking thus, I bewailed a lot. Anxiously thinking all this about, O sage, I became free from haughtiness. I remembered Vishnu, who is identical with Shiva and who is the cause of my origin. I eulogized him with auspicious hymns, supplemented by statements of my miserable predicament, on hearing which the Lord appeared before me immediately. The Lord Vishnu with four arms, lotus-like eyes, holding conch, lotus, and mace in his hands, and wearing the refulgent yellow robe, dark-complexioned and the beloved of the devotees. On seeing him in that form, I eulogized him again with devotion and words choked with tears. I considered him as my sole refuge. On hearing this psalm of prayer, Vishnu, the destroyer of the miseries of his devotees, became delighted and spoke to me who sought refuge in him. Vishnu said, O Brahma of great intellect, you are the blessed creator of the world. Why did you remember me? Why do you laud me? What great misery has befallen you? Tell me now, I shall quell it entirely. You need not entertain any doubt in this respect. Brahma said, On hearing the words of Vishnu, I heaved a sigh of relief and raised my face. I spoke to Vishnu with due salutations and palms joined in reverence. O Lord of Lakshmi, Lord of Gods, please listen to my submission, O bestower of honor. On hearing it, please take pity, remove my misery and bestow happiness on me. O Vishnu, I sent Kama with his followers, the Maras, Spring, and others to fascinate Rudra. They employed various means, but in vain. He, the ascetic of equanimity, was not moved at all. On hearing these words of mine, Vishnu, the omniscient, who is conversant in the principles of the Shiva cult, was surprised and spoke to me thus. Vishnu said, O Brahma, how is it that such an idea entered into your mind? Considering everything sensibly, tell me the truth. Brahma said, Dear Lord, hear the story. Your magic is very fascinating. The world is attracted by it. Happiness and misery are based on it. Induced by that, I resolved on committing the sin. Please listen. At your bidding, I shall narrate it in detail. At the beginning of the creation, ten sons were born to me, together with a very beautiful daughter originating from my speech. Dharma originated from the heart and Kama from the various parts of my body. O Vishnu, on seeing my daughter, I was highly fascinated. I looked at her with a distorted vision since I had been deluded by your Maya. Immediately Shiva came there and reproached me and my sons too. He rebuked us, considering himself the sole Lord, possessed of supreme knowledge, an adept in yogic practices, and an enjoyer with full control over all sense organs. O Vishnu, 
My sorrow is that even after manifesting himself as my son, he reproached me face to face. I have mentioned it to you now. If he were to take a wife unto himself, I shall become happy and forget all my miseries. O Keshava, it is for this purpose that I have sought refuge in you. On hearing these words of mine, Vishnu laughed and spoke immediately, delighting me, the cause of entire creation. Vishnu said, O Brahma, listen to my words in full. It will eradicate your frustration. It will be consistent with what is said in the Vedas and Agamas, and what is in conformity with reality. O Brahma, how is it that you became so utterly confused in mind? It is improper for the reciter of the Vedas and the creator of the universe to be so wicked. O slow-witted one, cast off this sluggishness. Do not indulge in such foolish thoughts hereafter. What is it that the Vedas say by means of their hymns? Think of it with a pure mind. You foolishly think of Rudra, the great Lord, as your son. O Brahma, though the reciter of the Vedas, you have forgotten all true knowledge. Considering Shiva on a par with ordinary gods, you are maliciously disposed towards him. Your good intents have vanished and evil ones have cropped up. Listen to the first principle that had been narrated of old. Have clean conscience. It is the true being that is glorified as the cause of all creation. This is decisive. Shiva is the creator of everything, the sustainer and destroyer. He is greater than the great. He is the supreme Brahman, the greatest Lord, the attributeless, the eternal. He cannot be defined. He is not subject to deterioration or decay. He is the supreme soul, without a second, unswerving and endless. He is the cause of dissolution, the all-pervasive and great Lord. He is all-pervasive, possessed of three gunas for the causation of creation, sustenance and dissolution in the name of Brahma, Vishnu and Mahesh, but really beyond rajas, sattva and tamas, the three attributes. He is distinct from illusion. He is free from desires. He is the creator of illusion, yet uninfluenced by illusion. He is an adept. He is possessed of attributes, yet independent of them. He is blissful in himself. He is free from suspicions and alternatives. He rests and relaxes in his own soul. He is free from the pairs of opposites, such as happiness and unhappiness. He is subservient to his devotees in a fine physical body. He is a yogin, devoted always to the practice of yoga. He is the guide to the path of yoga. He is the lord of the worlds and the destroyer of arrogance. He is favorably disposed to the miserable. Such is the Lord, our Master, whom you consider your son. Cast off all these stupid notions. Seek refuge in Him. Worship Him exclusively. When He is propitiated, He will bestow on you all that is auspicious and beneficent. O Brahma, if a thought surges in your heart that Shiva should take a wife unto himself, you must perform penance directed to Shiva and think upon Shiva. Meditate upon Shiva with that desire cherished in your heart. If that goddess is propitiated, she will do everything. If Shiva takes an incarnation as a human being in her attributive aspect, as the daughter of a person in the world, she will definitely become his wife. O Brahma, command Daksha, let him carry out a penance strenuously with a good devotion to beget her to be given as a wife unto Shiva. O oh dear, Shiva and Shiva are subservient to their devotees. This must be realized. Both of them, being intrinsically the supreme Brahman, can readily assume attributive form out of their own free will. 
Brahma said, After saying so, the Lord of Lakshmi thought upon his Lord, Shiva. Thanks to his favor, he received the real knowledge and spoke to me again. Vishnu said, O Brahma, remember the words spoken by Shiva formerly when requested due to his own will by us at the time of our nativity. Everything has been forgotten by you. Blessed indeed is the great illusion of Shiva, which deludes everything. It is incomprehensible to all except Shiva. When Shiva, devoid of attributes, became, out of his own accord, full of attributes, he created me first and then you with his own power in the course of his divine sport. The Lord Shiva assigned to you the work of creation. O Brahma, the imperishable Shiva, the cause of creation, entrusted me with the task of sustaining it. Verily, he is an adept in divine sports. Then we requested him, O Shiva, Lord of all, be pleased to take an incarnation with all your attributes. Thus requested, he laughed and spoke sympathetically, with his eyes raised to heaven. O Vishnu, a form of mine like this shall be manifested through my limbs and shall be glorified as Rudra in the world. He is my full form and perfect manifestation. He is worthy of being worshipped by both of you. He shall fulfill your desires entirely. He is the cause of dissolution, the presiding deity of attributes, the practitioner of perfect yoga without anyone to exceed. All three deities are my forms, but Shiva is particularly my full manifestation. O sons, Shiva's forms too shall be three. The form Lakshmi is Vishnu's wife. Brahma's wife is Saraswati. The perfect form Sati shall become Rudra's wife. After saying this, the great Lord blessed us and vanished. We bent our heads, joined our palms in reverence, and returned to our respective abodes. Engaged in our own tasks, we were very happy. In due course we secured our wives. Shiva incarnated as Rudra at Kailash, his residence. O Lord of subjects, Shiva too shall incarnate as Sati, and efforts shall be made for her future incarnation. After saying this, Vishnu blessed me and vanished. I rejoiced much, and my jealousy disappeared altogether. <laughs>